All right, so it's about time to start. 2.30. All right, so um, this is a talk on dependency injection, uh, specifically using the, the breadboard module. Um, I'm Jesse Lures. I work for Infinity Interactive. Uh, some of you might know me as Doi online. Uh, and so before, before I get into dependency injection, what it is and, and how it works, I just wanted to start with, with a, a simple kind of motivating example for, for the kind of problems that this is going to be solving. Um, so you have your, your, basic, your basic web application here. It does the, um, you get a, a request and it connects to the database, pulls some information out of the database, um, renders a template and returns the, the data. And so this, this works fine. You, you want to add more features to it. You want to refactor it a little bit. So you split things out into separate classes. You have your model and your view class. Um, and you call methods on, on those to get, to get the data now. And, and, and that's, that provides a bit more structure. Um, so so in, in the next, <coughs> next step, you might want to add logging information, say. So you add a logger. You don't want, you don't want, um, you don't want to have to configure this logger in more than one place. And you kind of want to avoid global variables. So you have the logger and you, you kind of have to pass it in manually to, um, to, the, to the, the model in the view so that they, they can be sharing the same logger that you've already configured here. There's not really any configuration, but if there were configuration here. Um, and so you're, you're adding, you're adding more, more functionality on, on this. Um, and so now you, you say you, you want to go and start testing. Um, and so you can't really, you don't really want to run your test against the live database. So you have to pull out the configuration for things like the, the DSN, um, pass all this information in, in, in various ways to, to various objects. And this starts to get kind of messy as, as the, the more you start, you, you're trying to build this in a way that's, that's easily, um, easily testable, easily uh, modular, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but it, it starts to involve a lot of manual fiddling around with, with passing the different pieces of, of data around. Um, one, one solution that, that a lot of people turn to at this point is just start sticking things in, in global variables. We have a global logger or, or that, that sort of thing, which starts getting messy when you, you're not sure where exactly things are used, where exactly they're configured. Um, so dependency injection is basically another solution to that problem. It basically, it, it's a form of inversion of control, which means that the inversion of control is just a general term for um, the, the, a, a framework taking control of the actual code, um, the actual code path that's running and giving you the opportunity to um, add configuration or callbacks or whatever and have the framework call back to you when it needs to know what to do. Uh, dependency injection is a specific instance of that. It's sometimes referred to as the inverse of garbage collection um, because garbage collection lets you just create objects and then just not really care about how they are destroyed, it just kind of happens automatically. Uh, dependency injection lets you kind of set up how your objects are all related to each other, and then you just ask the dependency injection system for an object, and it kind of magically fits all the pieces together and, and gives you your objects. You don't really have to think about how all the, all the relations work every time you want to create something. Yeah, so just it manages, it manages your, the construction of your objects. Uh, it, th this provides a lot of really useful kinds of, of benefits. Um, one, one of the main issues, so, so say you're using, like I know a lot of you use Catalyst, and so you have, you have a, a Catalyst model that you want to use in some cron script or, or something along those lines. There's not really a way to get at, to, to just tell Catalyst, give me an instance of the model class. You kind of have to take the model class and instantiate it yourself and pass in whatever arguments, whatever constructor parameters it needs. Um, and, and getting that right and making sure you pass the right things in um, can be, I mean, it's, it's, duplicated, it's duplicated information, it's duplicated work. And it's not, we, we, that's something that would be really nice to avoid. And so using, using a dependency, an actual, 
explicit dependency injection system means that you can take that, that dependency injection system and say, give me an instance of the model class. And it's going to be the same way that the actual application is, is saying, give me an instance of the model class. It's going to go through, go through the same code, and so you, it eliminates that, that duplication. Um, and as, as I mentioned before, it, it removes the need to have globals for, for things that are, that are used a lot of, in a lot of different places. Um, the, the, um, because you, you can, it handles passing, passing the objects around wherever they're needed, and so you can explicitly say where these objects are needed. You don't, you don't have to um, just kind of put it out there and let anybody have access to it, which can make things confusing. Uh, it, it, and, and it allows you to structure your code a lot more modularly, which is really useful in terms of testing and reuse. Uh, you, can, you can have all your objects um, take, take all the parameters that, that they need and be able to swap them out, um, say if you need to mock certain parts of it for, for a test or whatever. You can just kind of swap, swap it out in one place and be sure that the entire system is going to, is going to be using that, that mocking uh, that mock object, which is very hard to do if you're hard coding calls to constructors at various points in your application. So breadboard is a is a framework for for handling dependency injection. Um, breadboard. It's um, it, it looks it, it makes it makes it look sort of like like this. This is this is a, a breadboard um, container. A container and the container object is is the actual. It, it holds all the different pieces, um, and then you wire them together in, inside that. And so I'll go over what all these different pieces mean. Um, the the basic component um, is is a service. A service represents some bit of data that you're you're storing in <coughs> that, that your app needs, basically. Um, you. It, it has one one point of entry you, you you call get on a service, and it'll it'll give you an, a new copy of a new instantiation of that object, um, or whatever string hash ref whatever whatever you're, whatever it's it's generating. There's three three built-in types of services. Uh, there's a const constructor injection. What this does is um, all of the, all of the um, it basically just calls new on on the class that, that you specify, um, and it passes in whatever whatever other pieces into the constructor automatically, so you don't have to write any of any of that um, manually. If you do need to write things manually, like if you need to call extra methods, or if you need to call a different constructor, or if the constructor takes arguments in a different way, uh, you can use the, a block injection, which basically just calls this uh, subroutine. Um, in order to create the um, the the object that, that you need, uh, you can you can optionally specify a class on there, which provides better introspectability, which is important later. Uh, it does type checking and, and that sort of thing. Um, and there's also literal services, which it's just a, a, a string, some kind of scalar that it just returns directly. There, there's no configuration for that. Uh, container is is a is a um, it holds services and it, uh, it can also hold other subcontainers. Um, the w the way you get at things in the containers is via the fetch method. So you 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 ask you ask it for a specific service or container via the fetch method. Um, and since generally what you're doing is fetching a service and then wanting to get the data out of it. Um, resolve is typically is what you're going to be using most of the time. You, you ask for it to resolve a specific service, and it'll just get the data out of there that, that you need. Um, so this is those are kind of the ba the building blocks. The thing that actually makes this useful is dependencies, hence the name dependency injection. It tells Breadboard how the different classes and, and services and, and things are are related. You, you basically specify um, a map of 
dependency names, which correspond to, say, the constructor um, parameter, the attribute names in, in your class, to uh, service paths, which is uh, the way to specify uh, services. Um, so here we have a logger service and a view service, and the view depends on the logger. And so what this does is it'll call um, the, the view constructor with um, the logger pointing to a, um, an instantiated logger instance. It'll first go through and, and through all, of, all the dependencies that are listed, call get on each of those services and take those um, objects that, that it got from that, from calling get on everything and pass them into the constructor automatically. Um, if you need to do more complicated things, if you're using block injection, um, the, blocks, the block uh, sub, subref will get the service as the first argument, which has, you, you can access the resolved dependencies directly um, by, calling, by calling the param method there. Um, if, you, if you have subcontainers, this is, this is why um, it's refer, referred to as, as um, service paths. Um, so you have the, the model which depends on the, on the DSN, um, and, that, and that's just like it was in the, in the previous slide. Um, and so then you have your app, which depends on the model, but the model is inside the container model, and so it's just model slash model. Um, it, it's, it basically uses paths in, in the same same sort of way that, that you that Unix paths work. Um, in general, they're 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 relative to the same level as as they're defined in. Uh, you can use uh, dot dot to go up a level. Um, you can use an initial slash to go to the root level. It's, doing that kind of stuff too much uh, tends to make things less flexible, and it's it's not usually recommended. Um, it, it, it makes it makes it harder to re reuse things, basically. But um, it, it's it, the ability is there if you need it. Do you have a question? That's just a, that's just a, con a convention that I have. I, I usually make my containers have capitalized names. I mean, it, it's not really important. Yeah, right, right, right. That, that's just a, a container to hold all the different parts that, that the model needs. It, like doing it to this level of um, encapsulation like that isn't usually necessary. I don't usually do it. This is really more of an example just to show how the, the paths work. Um, generally, like most most of my stuff just has a single top level container with all the services in it. I know Stephen does a lot of other things, but <laughs> um, so the other side to this is parameters. Um, parameters are basically they they work the same way as dependencies, but instead of instead of them being hard coded in as services, you pass them in when you call, when you call, when you, when you actually try to resolve it, you, you have to pass the values in. Uh, so here we have, we have a, a user service, which um, requires a name. The, the class require, requires a, a name to be instantiated, but you don't know what the name is gonna be. You can call, you can call resolve and pass it in a name, and it'll give you a, an instance of, of the user class um, with, with all the all the data that, that you supplied, um, you can you, if you do know what the name that you need is, you can still depend on it. You have to pass it in in the dependency specification down down here, um, or you can depend on you can depend on it with, without resolving the um, without resolving the parameters and then resolve the parameters inside the, the block injections code ref um, in case you need to determine it dynamically based on other information or, or that sort of thing. Um, param parameters and dependencies work, work well together. Um, if you, if you, 
you can specify whatever parameters and dependencies that you want, and they'll, the dependencies will be resolved automatically. The parameters will have to be specified, but they all provide the same sort of information. You can, you can also specify the, the same parameter and dependency um, as in, in the same service, and this will allow you to um, provide a, a sort of default for your, for your, parameter, for your parameters. Um, inside the, 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 as a service, basically. If you don't need to, if you don't need to provide it as a, as a service, you can also just specify it as a default in the parameter specification. Uh, the, these are, these are the, the, the three sort of options that parameters can take. There's ISA, which takes a um, moose type constraint of some sort. Um, you can specify whether it's optional um, optional parameters will just not be filled in if you don't specify them. Um, and then you can also provide a, a default. Um, and it just depends on, on whether you want that to be available as a service or not, basically. Um, and, and the last sort of component to the, the, the basic uh, like underlying breadboard um, is life cycles. So life cycles basically determine what happens when you when you actually try and resolve the service. When in, by default, when you resolve a service, it will create a new instance. It, it'll it'll create a, a new object every every time you call get on it, which is usually what you want. You're usually only doing this at in, uh, in initialization time. Um, what you can do, though, is if you if you specify that um, the service has a, a singleton life cycle, that means that it'll resolve the service once the first time you call it, and then every time after that, um, calling it on the same container instance, it will return the same object. This is a lot more flexible than actually using something like MooseX singleton or that sort of thing in in your classes themselves. Putting, moving this kind of logic into the part of the code that actually needs to handle, that actually knows how to handle um, object creation for your specific app, uh, makes things a lot more flexible. You, you, because it's not really, it's not generally, um, it's not, it's not generally known like when you're writing a class whether or not it's going, it might sometimes be useful to have multiple instances. So if you, if you had like a, a, a global singleton logger, there might be some cases where you want to have a separate logger that goes somewhere else. But if you make the class a singleton itself, you can't really do that. And that's what this allows you. You, you can specify two different logger services, one of which is a singleton and one, with, one of which isn't. Or you can have two, like two singletons that, that you depend on separately. Um, and, and it allows you a lot more flexibility in terms of uh, how, your, how your application all fits together. Um, and so th those, are the, those are the basic components uh, that, that make up this, this framework. So you, you can see how um, the logger here is a singleton. Um, the view depends on the logger. The model depends on the logger and the DSN. Uh, and then the app depends on the model and the view. And all you have to do, once this is all defined, all you have to do is say resolve the app and it'll fit all the pieces together. You'll have your model, which is connected to the database. You'll have your, your view, which can do whatever. Um, and you, you don't need to encode any of this information into your actual objects themselves, um, which makes them a, a lot easier to reuse in other contexts. So before we, before we move on to the more uh, advanced sort of topics, um, I just had a couple kind of best practices for how um, you should, how this stuff should really be used, um, because this this is one of the well, this is one of the areas where it, it's hard to when you're first when you're first trying to wrap your brains around what breadboard does, it's kind of hard to see where exactly and how exactly it should be used. Um, the 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 key thing that the, the most important thing really is that it's really only intended to be used during your application's initialization. Um, 
if if you if you allow like because th there's a lot of there's a lot of cases where you need to instantiate objects later on during the runtime of the application, um, and if and so if if you try and fit breadboard into all of that stuff, you end up with just a big, basically god object sort of thing. It, it's just globals by another name, and so that's really not what you want to. That that kind of defeats a lot of the purpose. What you really you really only want to have this available during initialization, and it gives you your application object, which is all set up, and then you never touch it again. If you do need to instantiate objects at runtime, that's what we have factories for. Like that, that's kind of the, the the purpose. And really, since this is Perl, which has decent language features, factories can just be closures. If, if you if you need that kind of dynamic um, object creation. Um, another, um, like I said earlier, avoiding unnecessary subcontainers, in my opinion, tends to make things clearer about how the relationships fit, fit together. Um, that, that's 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 not really a, a hard and fast rule. Uh, it's it's just the way that um, ha has made a lot more sense to me. Um, And so one of the one of the, um, in, in terms of reuse, it's a lot easier to reuse these things. So so the the previous examples ha have all been just creating instances of breadboard container, and then you do something with um, th then you have a container instance. But you being able to Abstract that away so you could just say, "Give me an instance of the container for my for my application," instead of having to define the whole um, property property directly right where you're using it. Um, you can subclass breadboard container. One, one of the one of the main one, one of the main useful features of breadboard is that every part of it is intended to be uh, extensible. So you can subclass the container. Um, the container sugar keyword, usually it takes um, the, the na a name to use for the container. It can also take a container instance, at which point anything in the block just appends onto that instance. And so what this is doing here, you have your, your class, your container class, which um, inherits from breadboard container. And then in the build method, um, it's already a breadboard container. You say container self, and then you define your your services all inside that. And so that way, when you you can just say my app container, um, you call new on that, and you have you have a new instance of, of your container class already um, already all configured. Uh, that, and, that, and that makes it a lot easier to reuse these containers in different contexts. If you need to take your container and make it a subcontainer in a different application, so you have all of your um, all of your objects um, able, able to be reused in, in a different context, you don't have to be copying and pasting a lot of uh, a lot of configuration around. Um, yeah, and yes, you can you can use it in a different project just by doing something like that. Um, and there are there are ways to make that um, a lot easier, which I'll get to in a little bit. So as as for the more um, so so the, the stuff that I, that I've talked about so far is it it, prov it provides a, a good abstraction for things you're probably already doing, um, but it doesn't really provide um, a lot of extra features of, with the stuff I've talked about so far. So this, this is basically, it's similar to Moose in that for a lot of the stuff you write in Moose, there is not, you're not really gaining much functionality over just writing it all by hand. What it's providing though is a common um, underlying framework to build upon so that if you do need more advanced features, they just work. And so one of the, one of the more advanced features in Breadboard 
um, is type mapping. Basically, you, you define a, a mapping between um, classes, cla class types, and the breadboard uses all, all moose type constraints, um, to a service. And so instead of requesting a service, you can request, give me an object of this particular type. Um, this, on its own, isn't necessarily very useful. But what you can do with this is you can tell Breadboard to infer what the dependencies should be by matching the types in the type constraints in that class to types that we've, type, that we've added to the type map in the container. And so, so here, so a simple example here, we have these two simple classes where the, the model class has a, a logger attribute. Uh, we declare it is a logger, which sets up the type constraint there. And then in the container, we, we tell it, um, we add both of those classes to the type map. And we'd say that they're mapped to something that you just infer what should be there. What this does is so, so type, so um, inferring the, from the logger class doesn't actually do anything because the logger class doesn't have any attributes. But it sets, it adds it to the type map so that when you say infer on the model class, it's, it loops through all of the attributes in the model class. And it's adds dependencies for each type that it finds. So that way you can say, you, you can ask it for an object of type model and the, the logger will just be there. Um, the, so the, the, the way this actually works is that any required attributes in the class that you're inferring um, are um, added either as dependencies if, um, if, if, it, if it can find the type in the type map or as parameters if it can't. And so you can, you can say infer on something that doesn't have a type map entry and you can pass it in later if you, if you need to. You can also um, explicitly add other dependencies. Like the, the infer uh, sugar function there takes any of the arguments that the service function did. Uh, it's just that most of them aren't really required if, if you're able to infer them. Um, and and any, any non-required attributes in the class aren't going to automatically become dependencies, but you can still provide them as parameters. So, like, using container classes is um, a, a really useful way to go in, in terms of in terms of reuse, it's um, doing it with just breadboard is kind of ugly and doesn't really have a lot of functionality. Um, breadboard declare is is a layer on top of breadboard, which kind of lets you define container classes by just writing them as mostly just moose classes. So you can declare these all as attributes, just regular attributes. The only difference is that instead of using default um, or builder, you pass in um, arguments that you would otherwise pass to service. So you have value there instead of default. Um, you have um, block. And you can define the dependencies. And you can pass infer on these, on these attributes also. And it will. Um, it will, what, what that'll do is it'll set up a type map entry, but also set up a named service so that you can, you can use them either way. So you define services just by defining attributes. The, the advantage to this is that you can pass in values to the constructor of this container class and override whatever the service would have um, whatever the service would have, would have resolved otherwise. If, the, if there's no value in the attribute, it'll do normal service resolution like, like I've been discussing before this. If you do 
um, pass in the value. Anytime it tries to resolve that service, it will take the value from the attribute instead. And so this allows you to do um, really useful things like create a new instance of your container using a, just a different DSN, which is incredibly useful for, for things like testing, uh, if you want to swap it out to use a test database or something like that. Um, as I mentioned, the, type, the, the way type maps work is, is a lot more simplified. Um, any, any attributes that, that declare a, a type constraint, which is a class type, automatically get added to the, to the type map, um, mapped onto the, the named service. So you can, you can resolve um, these, these types either by type or by name uh, and depend on them either by type or by name. And, and then if you, if you pass the, the infer parameter to the, the, to the service, it, it will automatically infer whatever dependencies it can the same way that, that breadboard does. So that's, that's kind of, um, that's breadboard. Um, there are a lot of, so the, there, there's, a, there's a lot, of, we, we use breadboard a lot at work. Um, there's not as much um, code like it, on, on CPAN that, that uses it. Um, it. It's more application level kind of, kind of thing. Um, but there, there are a couple uh, really useful examples that, that are available. Um, MongoDB X breadboard container is, I mean, if, you, if you're using Mongo, I don't know how many of you are familiar with MongoDB, but um, you basically have a, a database which has a bunch of collections and those collections have things inside them. And so what this does is it lets you map individual pieces of, of um, individual collections in, in, inside your, your Mongo database to services. So you can just create a, this, this container that connects to your database. And then you can depend on individual pieces of data inside the database as, as though they were services. It automatically sets all this up. And, and this is one of the things that I, that I was talking about um, in terms of breadboard being very extensible. Very, it, it's intended to be very, um, extending it like this is, is one of the main goals, basically. Um, yeah, um, one of the other, another useful item is um, Catalyst plugin breadboard. So like I was saying at the beginning of, of the talk, there, Catalyst do, doesn't really provide a good way. Like Catalyst has it, its own internal sort of homegrown dependency injection system that's not really very well exposed and it's kind of gross. and they're currently actually working on converting it to breadboard internally, which will clean up a lot of things. At the moment, the best that you can do, there's a plugin for Catalyst, Catalyst Plugin Breadboard, which lets you provide, lets, lets you write your own, write your configuration as a breadboard container. The same, like the, the same like hash with all, all the keys and stuff just gets mapped to containers and services. Um, and then you pass that in there, and you can, and then you can use like, and then Catalyst will use that to find its configuration, and then you can also use that um, externally to create um, objects the same the same way that Catalyst is doing. So you're using the, the single configuration, um, which it's, it's a lot more structured than just kind of reading in the Catalyst configuration file and, and pulling out, like parsing it with, with JSON or YAML or whatever and grabbing out the data that you want and sticking it into the constructor and, and doing all that by hand. It, it's a lot more structured and, and this, this will be a lot, this will all be a lot, a lot smoother once the, the breadboard um, branch in in Catalyst get, gets merged, but I'm, I'm not really sure what the timeline is on that. Um, another another useful project is Ox. I gave a talk on Ox at last YAPC. Um, Ox is is basically a web framework that me and Steven are, are working on. Um, 
I've been using it for a, a lot of internal things. It's not on CPAN yet um, because I'm bad at writing documentation. <laughs> um, but soon. I, I've been saying that for like a year. Um, but no, I've, I've been using it for a lot of internal projects. What it basically, it, it lets you define your application as a breadboard declare container class. So all of your, all of the components of your application are attributes on this container class. And then you define a router and it's basically a, just a, a very thin wrapper around that, that maps um, path router, which I'm not sure who, how many people in here have used maps path router onto uh, just a, a very thin layer on PSGI. Um, and it provides a, a lot of, um, it, it basically tries to be out of your way as much as possible. You, you can, it doesn't, the, the main goal is that all of your component, component classes are just normal Moose classes. There's no actual plugin system. It's all just um, extending classes and, and, and plugging them into the, into the right point. And that's, and that's the thing that, that Breadboard really is, is powerful for, uh, is being able to um, just swap out bits and pieces of the application and have things still work. Like you can take this, you, you could take this application here and subclass it and add, add new attributes and depend on, on different, different parts and, and have things just kind of work. And, and that, that's really, um, it's, it's a really powerful way, way of doing things. It's, um, it's, it's a bit more low level than it doesn't, it, 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 it avo avoids as much magic as possible, which is something that, that a lot of people like magic because it, it saves some time. I personally like being explicit a lot more because it makes more sense to me. So it, it's really kind of a trade-off how, how much you're in, interested there. Um, but you could, you, can, you could definitely build on top of this to get more functionality. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that, that's, that's what I have. Um, if there's any questions about any, any part of that. Um, anyone? Yep. Yeah, I, I I have not seen. I, I've looked at a couple um, dependency injection frameworks in uh, in Java. Um, I, I think it, it's it's more it's more similar to things like um, Google's Juice framework. I think, um, but I'm, I'm not really very familiar. I, Stephen, are you are you familiar with with other languages, dependency injection frameworks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Yep. Yeah. So, say I, I have a some production code and I want to check this, but I want to do a test, I want the database to be different from what I Right. Would I, what would I do with Breadboard to, to do that? Well, so that, that's, that's one of the, the main things that, that um, in Breadboard declare. If you have the, the DSN as an attribute and you have the logger as an attribute, you can just pass those into the constructor and that will override whatever would have been there otherwise. And then that's, that's how I usually do it. Okay, so there's sort like, of a, a global constructor. A global constructor. Would, in other words, So, well, that, that's that's the point. It, like breadboard, breadboard provides one one centralized configuration for the entire application, and it, it wires everything together. So that if you just do something like this, okay. where you pass in the, the new DSN, 
That's the DSN that the entire application is, is going to be using for, for that, and, and that's, that's how you would override that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. No, yeah, it's the, the, the nesting of the containers is um, it's mostly just organizational. Um, there, there are other, there, there's one other feature that I didn't, I didn't touch on in, the, in this talk. You can have um, parameterized containers, which, which you pass, which basically are a container that takes another container as an argument, and then you can depend on things in the, in the container that you passed in. And so having that, um, so, so subcontainers are useful in that way. They're also useful um, in terms of reuse. Like if you have like like MongoDBx breadboard container is just a breadboard container that you can just instantiate inside your own existing containers, and so having the ability to do that is also useful. Yep. What do you mean? My app, my app container new is the container instance. Right. And so what does new, does new, let's say new totally return something because it's just a method call. Right, yeah, new. So does model return something? Yeah, so, so it's, it's just, it's just, um, it, it's just the same, it's just a class. You call new and you instantiate a new instance of this container. And then you call model to read the model attribute. Which, if there's if there's no if you don't pass in a value for the model attribute, it will resolve the the, the service okay. and get the value based on that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it, it, it's kind of weird, <laughs> it, but it. it Yeah. That was that refresh Right. Um, I'm, I'm, so I'm trying to, to translate that possibly totally system in long worldview into how I would use the Yeah. Use well, I mean, you, 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 could just, you could just directly change the, the value in the DSN that's specified right there. I mean, and, and that, would, that would work too. And you can do that even if you're not using Breadboard Declare. Like that, that's that's the that's the advantage to breadboard in general is that if you just have a normal container class um, like here, um, you can just go in and change the DSN right there, and and it'll it'll be used for the entire application. Like because there's there's the one point you're not duplicating information that way. Your your code no your code, dollar c resolves the app, okay. and that application is is your application object, okay. uh, and so that's okay. yeah the, the container and the application are, are are different things that that's the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that and that's and that's that's what I, what I was saying earlier. You can you can take the breadboard declare and subclass this and override the DSN attribute, and that just all works. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the lifecycle system is is just as pluggable as the rest of Breadboard. Like for instance, uh, Ox that I was talking about before, uh, Ox has a request lifecycle, so you can get one object per request, um, and you you can add those kind of things in uh, if if you want them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
Yeah, no, that, that's, that's, the, the, that's the whole point is that that's all hidden behind breadboard. That, that's, that's all taken care of. You're not actually creating any of the objects that are, that are further down like that. They're created by breadboard, and it's, it's feeding in all the dependencies recursively all the way down. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? All right. Thanks.